intent on purchasing them, and he had a middleman in between you guys who had the cards, or you were in a he, possession he of He didn't have a middleman. I had a middleman because that middleman has been my friend since 2016 because he bought my video game brand. Okay, so what happened with that then? Why why does so, Spooky say so that the I, cards were stolen? I, or, or I looked at turned? his... I looked at he he came to me while I was there and said, "Hey, I heard that you're a financial guru." I said, "Yes, that's what happens when you make 5.3 billion dollars in your lifetime." He said, "Hey, will you get me on a financial hawk? I heard you're a financial Jesus." I said, "Yes, I am. I created the infinite banking model and I have a times 2 investment strategy that you could do every 12 months and you will double your entire wealth." Is it no surprise that Boogie will get tricked by a man like this? I guarantee you a times two infinite banking model that you just put money in and take it out at, within a year and you're doubling your money. Slam doink! Oh, slam doink! Now, I want to give a brief shout out to Lunar Parks who somehow concocted an interview with Boogie Shaman. Don't really know how that worked out considering that Lunar Parks was doing furry VR online trolling videos prior to somehow snagging this interview with the shaman. So if you're missing out, there's a lot of things flying over your head. $5.3 billion. Damn, if only Boogie could get 50k. Could get out of debt, you know? Hook him up a little bit over there, Mr. Mr. Flaming Water. Mr. Mr. Firewater, hit him up. That's most definitely what is up. In case you missed it, basically Boogie on Twitter has been talking for like a week straight about how his shaman went to his house and vandalized it. And this is on the back of Boogie claiming that the shaman was yelling in his dog's face and Boogie the big tough guy kicked him out. And that the shaman believed he was entitled to $100,000 worth of Boogie's magic collection. It's a whole thing. But are we surprised? Even if this conversation actually happened between the shaman and Boogie. I mean, Boogie's seeing flashing green dollar signs inside of his eyes. He's not even listening. He heard, he heard billion and he's like, uh, ka-ching, ka-ching. Help me out, Mr. Firewater. I need your help, buddy. So, we're going to examine it. We're going to examine... Boogie basically had two different videos leading up to this point. One that basically doesn't have a ton to do with the incident that occurred. But don't worry. Boogie, Boogie clickbaited it perfectly. He titled it, Afraid to Go Home. Even though the, the Firewater guy situation didn't happen until basically the end of the video. But we're going to, we're going to review it and we'll talk about some other things. You'll know that I'm actually in Ohio, which is kind of neat. I have some friends and family and people that I know and care about in Ohio, and I'm doing that secret project, which you'll probably see sometime in the summer, if that. You think his uh, special buddy is, is Cyrax? You know, somehow we have a separation of the two oddest forms of entities that exist, Cyrax, the Goblin Man, and and Jabba the Hutt Boogie. I don't know. Maybe there's a possibility. Weird things happen in Ohio, all right? You got losing sports franchises. You got cornfields. I mean, what else do you really need? That, that, that encompasses everything. Now, the one thing it doesn't encompass is the fact that Boogie is collaborating with Mike Klum on another documentary about EDP. And... I don't want to spill my load too much in this video because whenever that documentary comes out, I'll talk about it, obviously. And I'm also slightly afraid because YouTube absolutely despises EDP content on their platform. Despises it. They, like, try their best to get it off, get rid of it. So I'm not even going to show the picture. There's basically a picture on Twitter of Boogie and EDP sitting at like a kitchen table with food all around them and i'm just gonna say this platforming an actual pedo an actual pedo is bad and being a part of it is bad boogie i seem to remember that you were complaining that mike clum was you know fudging numbers in your documentary so why am i supposed to sit here and believe that this is going to be 
a documentary full of integrity and it's not actually going to be skewed in a way of giving EDP a chance to speak and protect himself and try and build up a platform once more. All right. There, there is zero reason for you to be involved, except I know why you're involved in the documentary. It's because you want to try and flex on somebody that's worse than you. There's not a lot of them out there in the world, but when Mike Klum hit, and it doesn't even make any sense. I mean, cause Boogie was abused by his parents allegedly as a kid. So that gives him expertise to show up and be involved in the documentary, Mike. That's odd. I don't like the idea. I'm never going to have a situation where I'm giving Cyrax a platform to talk to all my viewers and say, you know what, guys? You know what? That eight-year-old, I thought there was a one in front of it, man. Oh, it's so fucked up, man. I really messed up. I'm not going to give Cyrax that chance. You shouldn't do the same for EDP, and I think it's gross, and, and Boogie tried to conjure up this image of well of course i would accept uh having the opportunity to go yell at a pedo for 50 minutes that's most definitely what is up you're not as cool as you think you are boogie all right it's really grotesque that you would involve yourself with him while also trying to pretend like oh yeah you know it's just humor it's all humor dude well you're grooming a 19 year old right now are we just gonna move past that i guess we are oh well going out here starting off this vlog with this video of a McDonald's. This is a McDonald's. Why is this McDonald's like this? I don't know, you have to tell me. But that's a cool McDonald's. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now, here's one of the problems with being disabled. I really wanna go in there, but I'm definitely not going in there. That's a lot of walking. Also, this monument to firemen, I, there's nothing bad you can say about a fireman. God forbid Boogie gets up out of his car after devouring a, a four-piece chicken McNugget meal with, with 12 McDoubles on the side. God forbid he gets up off his ass and walks around inside of a museum for a little bit. You want to know the crazy part, Boogie? You want to know the crazy part? A lot of museums are actually designed so that you can stop and take a break like every 50 feet. Believe it or not, go to an art museum and you'll see. Now, yes, it might be difficult to maybe walk upstairs, but guess what, buddy? Ever since the turn of the century, we've had elevators. I know it's crazy. It's crazy. But you can walk for 50 feet, sit down, take a break for five minutes, gaze around, look at the ceiling, look at the floor, look at the flab underneath your chin. And then you can get your ass up and walk around some more. That's how you lose weight, buddy. That's how you lose weight. I know Chief Firewater got fucking eviscerated, disappeared from your life because you make really good judgments. And you just don't have your healing powder, your, your midget powder that he's dusting onto your head from Beetlejuice. I know that that's disappeared, so you have to find an alternative to losing weight. And why not go to a good old-fashioned fast food restaurant. This food, I'm already cheating a little bit because I, I had it last night while we were filming. I liked it so much I had to come back and get it again. This is a place called Swinson's. It's an old-school drive-in. You park your car, the waiter comes up, he gets your stuff for you, gets your order, and I got a pretty solid menu. This is voted the best burger in Ohio. Actually, never mind. This is the Sloppy Joe. I wanted to try the Sloppy Joe. I haven't had a sloppy joe since I can remember, and I, I'm not making much of this one. It's not like I'm gonna make it at home, right? You gotta try in, in a restaurant style. Oh wow, oh wow, that's actually really good. You wanna try that? Yes. <laughs> Here is the burger. This burger's called the Galley Boy. What do you think of the sloppy joe? It's it's really good. It's sweet, mm -hmm. meaty, sweet, meaty. This is the Galley Boy. I don't know what's on it. America's best cheeseburger voted Ohio's best cheeseburger. I I think it's true. Because I don't know what this sauce is. But I will tell you, it's hot, fresh. It's got this sweet sauce to it. You gotta try that too. That is probably the best burger I've ever had. Yeah, try that too. As I'm literally taking up, I don't know, 90% of the fucking screen. Is Desi even inside the car or does she have to open the side door so that she can give you more space to take up take up the screen of this filming? Just absolutely massive. Just consuming my very pixels on my screen. 
Thank you very much, Boogie. And, of course, you know, at least it's something new, right? He had McDonald's in the morning, and now he's going to get something different. But it is kind of crazy because, I don't know, anytime I go to a different city, there's like a 0% chance I'm going to a fast food place unless it's literally my only option. Like, if I show up at 11 p.m. at night and I haven't eaten all day... And it's like, oh shit, I should get, I don't know, a fucking McDouble. And and that's that'll be my dinner for tonight. I get that maybe. But when you're somewhere else, like find a find nice restaurants to go to. I know you can't really find Swenson's outside of like maybe it's just Ohio, maybe it's the Midwest region, but hey, at least it's something new, right? Leave me alone. <laughs> it's a quiet day in the zoo. It's a Friday and it closes early. So you don't have to be very busy for very long. You're very pretty. You're pretty like my girlfriend. She a cheetah too. Uh -huh. That's okay. Do I look delicious to you, sir? You look delicious. Well, he looks right at you when you talk to him. Do I look delicious to you, sir or madam, as the case may be? No, Are you hungry for my meats? Oh, oh, he is hungry. He is. Spider mate, Desi, you're in trouble. Look at this giant tourist. I think you can, Desi, what are you doing? I ride one of these at home. Are you talking about me? Today, I did go ahead and rent the scooter. I know people get mad when I rent one of these, but I just saw this thing and I thought it would be really fun to scoot down it at about 800 miles an hour. It feels like, oh my God. Let me get speed going, right? Yeah. Oh, Desi, Desi, grab the back, slow it down for the love of God. This is epic, guys. This is really epic. When I turn on YouTube, I'm like, damn, I really hope I see a morbidly obese man flirting with a fucking cheetah and comparing that cheetah to his groomed girlfriend that's most definitely what is up youtube that is definitely why i want to see and the more i say it the more i'm like damn why is nobody else calling out the fact that boogie is very obviously grooming <laughs> this girl ah, i ride one of these back home uh did i mention i was a virgin and my dad left me but i moved in with boogie after three months that's most definitely what is up youtube most definitely we're having the time of our lives i can't even be fucked to walk down ramps it's not even fucking stairs boogie can't even be fucked i'll just take a fucking scooter around because who cares you gotta eat don't forget you gotta eat this is a place called the harp it's an Irish pub. This is, I think they're called pierogies, garlic, onion. Uh, it's, what do you think? It's, it smells and looks It's and so good. Let's amazing. try it. Let's get into it. I've already started. Oh, that garlic, that onion. Oh, it's so garlicky. Potatoey. It's uh, Irish people know how to eat. What's the taste like? Oh, it's so hot. Can, it's too hot to eat? Ooh, what, what's, so the, what's the meat in there? What is that? I think that's beef or... I don't know. It looks so good. This is the most painful eating moment. It's like, if you're going to be fat, at least be knowledgeable about the food you're eating, bro. I don't understand why an Irish pub is serving pierogies, because pierogies are Polish. They're not Irish, in case you didn't know, Boogie. But you are correct in saying that they're delicious. They are delicious. And in case you didn't know, Upper Ohio, I'm pretty sure, has a decently large Polish community. Why? I don't know. Why do I know that fact? I feel like it stumbled across me from one of my friend's parents when I played soccer growing up. And they ate pierogies. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And they hooked me up. And I was like, ah, nice to know. And it's just been embedded in my brain for years and years since then. The next stage is that shepherd's pie looks delicious. I won't lie. Whenever they get the nice whip of the cream, uh, the, the creamy mashed potatoes on top, and they get that nice crisp when they broil it under the oven. Ooh, ooh, fuck me up. But it's called shepherd's pie because there's lamb in it. Oh my God, fucking insane, I know. Shepherd, lamb, oh my God. If it had beef in it, it would be a cottage pie, all right? I, I can't believe that I have to give a Gordon Ramsay level education to you, Boogie, about food. I thought there would be one thing in the entire world that you would just dwarf me in. Not just size, but in knowledge. And apparently it's not even food, buddy. They basically forced dessert on us, but also Desi was begging for it. This is her favorite dessert in the world. This is creme brulee. Creme brulee. But nobody has a bad creme brulee. This dessert you can't go wrong with. 
and it's not so big that you're gonna get sick off of it. It's just a few bites. Share with somebody you love. Share everything with somebody you love. Being a travel vlogger like my friend Adam, Jake with the car provider, that kind of thing. And I definitely wanna do that with Desi. Even if it costs me money, I'm gonna start saving up to do more stuff like this. And if you're watching these videos, you made it all the way to the end of this. You're the reason I'm able to do it. I really hope you're not in the uh, the shady, bad part of Cleveland. I'm trying to recall that uh, Welcome to Cleveland, that song from early YouTube, and recall which part. Is it the east or west side of Cleveland that's bad? Either way, it looks like he's in a Scooby-Doo ghost town. Not looking good, dude. Not looking good. And this might be controversial. I'm going to throw it out there. I really don't fuck with creme brulee. I don't. I don't. I'm more of a cake guy or an ice cream guy. Pudding doesn't really fuck with me, right? And I don't like the crispy top. It just, it doesn't jive with me, all right? And, and of course, Boogie has to take a moment and say, it's only a couple bites, bro. Boogie even said... I'm not even that hungry for dessert. I'm not that hungry. But Desi, oh man, she was begging for dessert. Yeah, I'm sure that's how it worked out, buddy. <laughs> well, I'm finally home from Ohio. And if you guys don't know this, my house has been vandalized. By the time you see this video, the issue should be mostly resolved. The offending party who did it should be in jail especially because they admitted to doing it while i was out of town the white sheet looks a lot better than the black plastics maybe we'll find another white sheet but that's the one that says thief on it just in case you were doubting if it was that person who thinks i stole from him he's had to leave his calling card and of course i mean he also admitted to it so there's that too he also talked about backing up on the lawn and peeling out on it and i guess i can kind of see the tire marks but that's just kind of silly right grass grows back i don't really i don't even really my lawn's so bad i don't really think i can tell the difference oh though you can still see the tire marks and the dirt well i don't own that part of the lawn that's city damage here's the craziest part for me i was trying to decipher if this was a real or fake story for the longest time because this feels like it should be fake right this feels like it, but all the pieces kind of morph together. Boogie is not there, and his shaman has come out to be a psychopath. So it was just like the perfect melding of, wow, I guess uh, I guess the, the mindset of the shaman down there is not very well, not really working out. So basically, this guy spray paints on his garage, on his car, Pulls a fucking dirt racing scene, a drifting scene with Cyrax through the gravel, through the dirt, and uh, also throws a rock through a window. That's most definitely what is up. I, I didn't even know about this until he said it online in an interview. He admitted to doing this. And then we finally went and checked the studio to see... If he was telling the truth, and he was, that's the window it came through. And you can see the glass down below, but there's not a lot. I must have really good windows. And then we have these blackout curtains and everything else. And I don't know how it didn't hit something important in here. But there it is, laying right there. How, it's a damn miracle that I wasn't sitting here, that I was in Ohio instead. And it's an even bigger miracle that nothing got hit. There's so much stuff that he could have destroyed here. Look at all the important shit he could have destroyed, guys. He could have destroyed my Mountain Dew. Fuck, that's irreplaceable. Can't get rid of that. I mean, that's, what, like $14 worth of Mountain Dew up there? Oh my god, Shaman. Can't believe that you almost destroyed that for me. Now, the one aspect of all this I'm going to bring some validity questions into is... So the shaman shows up, somehow is bewildered by the fact that Boogie's car is not there. So he decides to spray paint the other car, which I would think by that point he'd understand is not Boogie's car. Could be mistaken, but I think it was his roommate's car. And then he decides to take like, you know, that knob on your like water faucet outside, breaks that off, throws it through the window, right? Kind of heavy, made of steel. And... 
his roommate just doesn't clean up the glass off the floor? I mean, was he not there either? Did he go with them up to Cleveland? I mean, there's a lot of questions I have. I brought this up on stream with you guys that were there. And it seemed like it was kind of split 50-50 about whether or not you thought that this was a valid thing. Or you think that he's in cahoots with the shaman. I really don't think he's in cahoots with the shaman because the shaman ended up getting arrested. But, uh... It's definitely not like the greatest look for Boogie in the entire world, I would say. At the very least, it is indicative that his decision making skills are dog shit. So, obviously, it's still all over the wipers. It's all over the car itself. It's on the mirror frames. So, that sucks. But we got this estimated to be cleaned by a professional for 800 bucks. So, uh, out 800 bucks, I'll, I'll survive. And it looks like Ryan has been taken into custody. And I cannot believe, obviously it's because he admitted to doing it and made further threats and things along that lines. And it's really interesting because a lot of people who have been trolls or detractors or whatever you want to call them in the past, these people went as far as to write Ryan and talk to him and gather evidence for us. I cannot believe that people who would normally be after me took my side in this and helped keep us safe. And if it wasn't for people doing these interviews and getting Ryan to admit things or getting him to issue, show the threats that he had his plans to do further harm, I don't know, think it would be as easy for the cops to do their jobs. Thank you. Have an abundance of caution then. But for now, it looks like we are safe. I'll carry this sword for you, Boogie. Don't worry. I didn't do anything. I didn't help out. If anything, I was skeptical of the entire situation. But uh, since you want to shout out the trolls, uh, I'll, I'll I'll bask in that light. I'll say uh, thank you, Boogster. I know I was just clowning on you for being fat and not knowing what food is and not walking and being kind of pathetic and grooming your girlfriend and stuff like that. But uh, thank you. Thanks, Boogster. Shout out to Boogie2988. Boogie four numbers. That's most definitely what is up. And that he claimed that you uh, screamed in his dog's face. <laughs> A workout routine? He was saying that you were there to help him lose weight in his Did you weight. see the video? Yeah. Of me at his house. Where I'm at his house. In his living room performing metaphysical activity. Yeah. So what, a, okay. what about that? So what did I do there? What did I do in that video? Um, I didn't see you yell at a dog's face. No, I did not. So you're saying that you, you're saying that you didn't do that then? That never happened. So man. he was, he's, so he's making up lies about you. Of course he does. Next. Well, but you'll find out why. I mean, if he agreed to a contract like that and then backed out of the contract, I mean, that is not backed out of the contract. He involved a city employee that stole them out of the back of my truck while we were at Macadoodles. If you read the police report, is they're they're up for grand larceny right now. Do you know that? These are text messages shared between Glenn and Flaming Star. Glenn being the friend that Boogie had returned the magic cards to him originally. They implied that the cards were taken without consent from Flaming Star's vehicle, and not given willingly, like Boogie said prior. I mean, the guy just straight up jacked the shit out of my truck and said "fuck you" after he did it. So he openly is admitting to taking it out yes. of the vehicle. Yes. You can't make this up, man. Thank God for Glenn, because I, I, I wouldn't have been able to do anything. But Ryan handed him over. So this is just a convoluted he said, he she said type of argument, right? In my unreleased Wings versus Wings 007 video, I made the same argument point that it's hard to really care or give interest or give a side when it's, ah, oh, this is Boogie's opinion of things, and this is Flaming Water's opinion of things. And also, I know his name's Flaming Star, it's not Flaming Water, I thought it'd be funny. Uh, since he's a chief, after all, he's a chief. But, who knows if he yelled in the dog's face. Also, it would never be shown in the video if he did. If anything, you could, like... I don't know, if Boogie wanted to try and own everybody and be like, see, this is how the guy actually is, show, like, the uncut version of any videos you made with him. Show, like, all the interactions. Maybe it's the same, it's just boring stuff you cut out, but maybe there's some interesting tidbits. Maybe it would tell me, 
wow, these two are in cahoots and they're working together. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a genius. I'm not Sherlock Holmes. I'm just, I'm just saturated content. I'm just doing what I'm trying to do. I'm doing it for the hood. I'm doing it for my crew. So wait, you, you gave Desi psychedelics as well. Yes, I did. On the second day. Wow. That's not information that is like publicly known. No. So, and guess what I did? Her story will tell you, if you ever get to hear her story, she'll tell you I sent her back to her homeworld in Orion's belt. And then a hand appeared out of nowhere, grabbed her, and brought her back to Earth. And he was right because that's your exact horoscope? How the fuck does that happen? His house was firebombed. They threw a the lid, the lid from the water pump. I actually picked up the lid that ho- covers the water. It's steel and threw it through the window that he streams out of Threw it through the window, hoping he was sitting there, but he wasn't, he wasn't home. And then I backed my truck up to his front door and peeled out with my truck from the front door all the way to the fucking street, ruined his lawn. And then I went home and it was actually in a car accident. Then all of a sudden I get a call from a Sergeant. Okay. Uh, from the Fayetteville Police Department talk about criminal mischief, and I said, there's 1,700 pissed-off Indians under my band. 1,700. And that man took our hold seed for this spring's crop by me spending the money to buy the supplements that we gave him because what he doesn't tell you is the 14, 1,400 in supplements that we gave him, the, the money for the, the mescaline trip that I put him on, the money for the a uh, mushroom trip that I put her on the hundred thousand for the cards. Do you know what that all totals to? It totals to one hundred and twenty-seven thousand dollars. Izzy is taking mushrooms with Boogie. That's cool. You know, as as a hopeful future parent, I uh, can't can't wait for that to be my kids. Wow, honey, you uh you decided to date a fifty-year-old disabled man whose dick can't get hard and who takes mushrooms all the time, that's super cool. You're really living life to the fullest, sweetie. Can't wait until you get back from your next trip. And then Flaming Star decides to just go hard and just admit to everything. That's cool. Yeah, good job, buddy. That, the, the, this information definitely will not be used in court someday. Are, like, like, does Boogie have a reason to be afraid, just on the record now? Yes, he was, there was, I made a public statement with the Fayetteville Police Department. Let me show you that. He, they know. It's not, I even tagged the government in it. So what he did. I agree, he I agree. Me, he made money off of that fucking video. He made money off of the video, the second video that I made. And then he made a public fool out of me twice. I think he has less than that, actually, because of the financial stuff that I saw. He only had five grand in the bank, and he only makes $3,300 a month. So you think that he's, like, like income-wise, he's not doing too good? He's doing horrible, but he's pretending like everything's okay. He's, he, I think he loses his house at the end of 12 months if he doesn't refinance. And I said, I said just to be a dick, I'm going to pay the houses on your tax. I'm going to pay the taxes on your house this year. If you don't pay me, may, pay me back in two years, I get your house. I have to give a public announcement. My name is Chief Flaming Star of the Cherokee tribe known as Cherokee. <laughs> My band is an intricate group of people that heal others. I hope that my story inspires you to be better and greater than who you actually are. Know this. You have to go through the darkest trials of your life in order you could ever stand truly into the light. May the positive vibrations of the universe forever be in your favor. So Chief Flaming Water really goes hard in the pain at the end. He basically talks about how, ah, Boogie should be afraid of me. He should be terrified. And then claims he was unaware of being filmed during Boogie's video and during Mike Klum's video somehow, some way, and that Boogie is keeping money and, and food out of the mouths of Flaming Stars, like, 
2,000 followers or something. It's just completely deranged nonsense, and I'm just not going to give it the time of day, all right? I'm not. Either way, let me know what you guys think down below. Is Boogie the next in line chief of Tribe Flaming Water, of Dancing Moon? Let me know down below. I'd be very curious. And until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. Thank mm -hmm. you.